In today's video, I'm going to share some of my work and use it as an opportunity to discuss three main factors. One, how I shoot in low light, both with the flash and without. Two, how I shoot for what the client is actually going to use the images for. And three, how I edit my images, as well as a few other things. So let's dive right into the work. So this work isn't necessarily going to be the most well-rounded meaning. I didn't try to create an editorial out of it. It's just some of the images I really liked that I had used previously in an Instagram post. A bit more about this event. What they did is they transformed a local bar to more accurately look like, because it already looked a bit like it, but to look like the bar in Peaky Blinders, um, as well as add some branding and that kind of thing. So I wanted to make sure I captured that by getting all the details, but also making sure I'm telling a visual story such as an establishing shot and then going closer and closer, um, getting all the details. Here you can see I decided to reshoot this sign. One, there was a guy in my background, but I kind of liked it. It gave a sense of it being a lived in place. And two, that one I just liked the more minimal look and having the sun more directly hit the frame. Um, you may notice if you look closely, I left a lot of the dust and grime and whatever visible. I'm not going to edit that out because it actually lends itself to what we want to achieve. We don't really want clean, perfect images here. I wanted to really show that this is a dingy, lived-in bar. And this is like a speakeasy type bar. It's not something that's going to be super pristine. It's going to be dusty, smoke-filled, that kind of thing. Here's the crew, just getting some lively shots. Um, this was not a priority, but they did want me to capture all the different drinks. They made specialty drinks throughout the night. Um, I'm always getting those specialty drinks in the shot, as we'll see later. And also, shots should typically have some branding. The first set of detail shots I did were really just using window light. Um, I looked for light entering. You can see if you look closely how light is kind of cascading from the right to the left. It's also got kind of a bar of light. And what I did is I placed each of those drinks within that bar. Here I really made the Bushmills logo pop by making sure it was getting hit most directly by the light, whereas the rest of the drinks are more in the shadow, um, farther from the light as well, so there is a fall off. So the next few shots I actually did with my videographer's help. Um, I didn't do a big setup, just real quick. We used a little tiny LED light, popped some light on the product, and then just grabbed those shots using an F2 aperture. So if we take a look, I'm at ISO 400, 50 millimeter, which I shot most of this event with. I almost never changed my lens. I would say like 80, 90% of my shots were with my 50. Um, I'm at 1.2 and 1 250th of a second. Here I have my establishing shots. Um, I also got one from across the street, but I didn't make it into this collection of images. Just making sure I'm not missing any detail shots at all. You really want to cover yourself and make sure you get everything. Even if you don't think it looks that interesting, just get a shot of it. Here I'm trying to create a more dynamic image by having something in the foreground. So the drinks being put on a tray and the drinks being made in the background. Um, this is a cool shot idea for anyone, um, have, shooting over someone's shoulder as they're having a drink handed to them. If you're not able to do that, you can also, jumping ahead, insert your own hand into the shot or ask someone, hey, can I get a sh this particular shot? Um, typically at an event, I'm not really posing anyone. I'm really there to document and I try to get all these types of shots naturally but there is nothing wrong with a little bit of coaching to get a cool shot that you know your client would possibly use. If it, you think your client would appreciate it, go for it. You don't wanna be stubborn and you don't want to have this like ideology about things where I don't coach, I only document. You are providing a service and you want to give the best service to your client as possible. It's not wedding photography where you can be a little bit more 
artistic with your work in a sense where you could say I'm an editorial photographer and I don't post people and that's what I do and as long as you are educating your clients and making sure it's clear that's what you do that's okay but event photography is a little bit of a different animal you can find your own voice of course there's a lot of artistry to it but in the end of the day you are providing a specific product to people so again with this image I have something in the foreground and then I have the bartender making the drinks in the background. It creates a more dynamic image rather than just having a bartender making drinks or just having the drinks already made. You have more of a story happening here, which is great for a social media post. Here I'm using three layers. I have the bush mills in the foreground, if you look here, followed by the drinks and then the bartender in the back. Now, as far as editing goes, I could probably pull up the shadows if I wanted, but again, I think this was pretty consistent with the dark and moody vibe they really wanted. With this image, I'm capturing the gentleman setting up. So there was sort of a VIP whiskey tasting section in the back. So let's talk a bit about editing and how I achieved an image that is consistent with the brand, consistent with what it was actually like to be there, and just has a cool look. And that would be by doing almost nothing actually. I don't edit my images very much. If you watch my channel, you know this. I don't believe in stylizing images as an event photographer for a variety of reasons. A, it is not your art. B, you need to make sure the work will match other images that they are using maybe on their social media account. If you really stylize an image, it's not going to be consistent and they can't really de-stylize a heavily stylized image. So you want something relatively neutral. However, you also want to capture what it was like to be there. And that is what I'm trying to do. I was told by the client they actually were looking for something with a bit more style. And what I did is I found a way to do that that still looked natural and wasn't excessive. I actually had a peek at some of the work they've had in the past by other photographers and they were more like, a lot of filters thrown on the work. What I chose to do is something quite simple. I chose to one, shoot with a mist filter, which actually did very little. To maximize the use of a mist filter, you really need to be shooting into a light source. It did okay, but it also had a drawback or a few drawbacks. One, it didn't let quite as much light through and B, it had a little bit of a harder time getting focus at times, but C, in the end, I didn't really need it. I mean, that's not really C, that's just another point. I didn't really need it because I discovered on a little trick in which you can kind of imitate that. And that would be, going back to the develop panel, the dehaze slider. Now, dehaze is typically used to reduce haze, but if you actually slide it the other way, it can be used, obviously you wouldn't go that extreme, but it can be used to kind of level everything out a bit and give that kind of dusty, kind of foggy, smoke-filled bar look. Um, now if I hit Y to compare the before and after, it's very subtle. In fact, most people won't even notice it. Um, some Im images I did it a little bit heavier than the rest, but mostly that's all I really did. And then I compensated for it by adding contrast too to kind of tweak that after. Because if you do pull, if I actually hit reset, which I don't know if I really want to do, yeah, I'll hit reset. You can see there's not much of a difference. If I put the contrast at neutral, it's a little flatter. And so it's very subtle, but I liked it. So taking a look at these two images, you might like the one on the right more. I kind of like the one on the right. But the one on the left is a bit more interesting as a way to tell a story. And I think it's something that would be much more successful on a social media post where you want to show the interactions, how lively the event was. Um, and so here, I'm over the shoulder. You have the waitress, the server, whatever, the bartender serving the gentleman a drink. Um, it's a lot more interesting, more dynamic again than just her holding the drink, which was a cute portrait, but there's not much happening other than that. So here is an image I like. Um, where would I rate it from like a one to 10, meaning like how effective is it as an event photograph? Uh, that can be a little tricky, but maybe like a seven. Uh, I love that I'm capturing the energy. I love that I'm capturing the vibe aesthetically, but what would make this image better? Maybe him holding the drink, maybe having some branding. We do have the drinks in the, on the table if you look here, but we don't really capture much branding. 
Here's an image, again, I caught a great moment, and having these images delivered is totally okay, but you wouldn't want to deliver just images like this. You know, my Irish whiskey sign and whatnot, it's blurred out, um, but capturing the emotion is also important. If you can capture the emotion and then have a variety of images that cover your bases, that's great, or even better, you're capturing the emotion, but you're also integrating the product. Here is an image where, again, no product, no nothing, but it's a good image and he was one of the, I think he worked for one of the companies. So I didn't only shoot with the 50 millimeter, I shot a lot with the 50 millimeter. I believe this is with 17 millimeters at f4.5. Um, a cool tip, sometimes you can get candid moments when there's a photo booth. You shoot like 45 degrees off and you can get your own moments. Uh, sometimes they'll look at you and you have great lighting from the photo booth or sometimes you're able to get a more candid, like a stolen candid moment. This image works because right here I have Bushmills, they're enjoying the drinks. Um, I kind of like that she's the only one looking, so you have one person really to focus on, to connect with, while the other people are clearly just having a good time. Um, this image, I recall, is a good example of where I did tweak my edit quite a bit more, but I was aware as I shot it that I would have to. Um, I just knew that I'm hitting the limits of my camera's ability and it would have to be edited. There's nothing wrong with editing to correct for something, and especially it's great when you know you're going to have to correct for it, because that means you understand photography. So as I shot this, I knew she would be underexposed, and what I did, if we look at the panel on the right, and I can see if I can make it larger, I don't know if that helps. Um, here's my before and after. Uh, I do believe I warmed the image up. Let me hit reset. Yep, I warmed the image up. I added a little bit of exposure. I boosted the shadows and I did that dehaze filter or slider. And that's the difference between before and after of the dehaze. What I like about this image is that while it does look kind of posed, it's clearly not really posed and I just caught a moment where she looked up at me and you can tell she's just reaching for her drink so it's more natural than just her holding the drink up, that kind of thing. Um, here's an image I probably would not rate very highly as far as how effective it is as an event photograph for any real use, whether that's in-house, social media, that kind of thing, or maybe if you are maybe licensing the images out to be used for an ad. This image would be used for none of it, but it is part of the story and capturing as many people as possible is a good thing. How could we improve upon it? Well, if she was holding a drink, easy. If you could see who she was reacting off of, that could help too. Um, if you had more of a sense of where she was, all of that would help. So you can shoot wider to show more scale. Um, you can shoot more head on with people. I'm not saying don't shoot over the shoulder. I do that a lot, but those are some options you have. Here I shot with a slightly slower shutter speed. Once I was able to get a lot of what I was looking for without that, I thought, okay, time to experiment. Let's try a slower shutter speed and get some motion. Here he's mixing a drink. Um, I actually spent some time here. Here's where I checked to see if the mist filter was doing much and surprisingly it wasn't really. I shot, I was taking it on and off. I actually use a magnetic filter so it's really easy to pull it off. Um, but then it's a pain constantly putting it on and off. So here, I wouldn't say there's no value to the one on the left. Um, it has an elegance to it. It's, a na it's very natural, but the one on the right, it's just much more exciting. And that's a good image to show how much fun people were having at the event. Really just liked this image. How effective is it? It's pretty effective, but not as effective as a standalone image. So I'm thinking about what if the client wants to do a social media post and they want to do a story or anywhere where they're in a format in which they're gonna tell a story. An image like this, totally great. But imagine you can only post one image on your social media account from an event. 
would this image be it? Probably not, and that's because there, again, is no branding. Um, he is drinking one of the specialty cocktails, but we don't know that. We, you know, as a third party, someone just checking out Instagram, you know, we don't know that. But in a collection of images, this could be a really great one. Now we're entering the back room where there is a special tasting by invitation going on. Same kind of thing, the energy, the interactions, try to get wide shots of the room. Again, this isn't everything. I do have a wide, a uh, lot of wide shots that I shot with a second camera. Here, I just couldn't decide which I liked more. <laughs> so up until this point in the night, I shot entirely with available light. Mostly I was able to do that because I was using a 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. But at this point, I decided to use flash. Not because I needed it, but because I wanted to achieve a specific look. What I did here is by having my camera's white balance at auto, it was setting its white balance to my flash, which I did not add any diffusion cap, gels, or anything. Because of that, because we had a lot of tungsten light and I dragged my shutter, I was able to allow that tungsten light to kind of bleed into the image and create a warmer environment. I wanted that because I really, that's the look I wanted. Often you don't want that look. You don't want tungsten -y, a tungsteny look unless it's appropriate. But, but because I wanted a vintage look, I wanted it to look very tungstenly lit. And so that's why I did this. And you guys will see the little difference. Now, if you look in the back of this image here, you can see everything was like wood paneled. That's not ideal for bouncing flash. It's not ideal, but it doesn't mean you can't use it you can absolutely use it um, because again, I'm exposing properly for my ambient light. In other words, if I turned off the flash, I would still get a good image. But what I'm using the flash for is to add a little bit of a pop and then to trick the image into looking a lot warmer. Make sense? I hope. Let's take a look at a before and after of this image because I actually did do quite a bit to uh, correct these. Um, that is an interesting look but it's a bit too dark, I think, for most uses. And so what I did is I bumped the shadows heavily and I dehazed at a minus 27, and that's it. I didn't really change anything else. Um, I added 15 contrast, and of course, all images get sharpened. And what I'll do is I'll actually, I wanna show the effect. By leaving the before and after. So these following images are pretty much straight, barely dehazed and barely added contrast. I believe I warmed them up a little bit. So these following images were not shot with a flash because I was kind of caught off guard. Uh, I was in that back room and I heard a commotion. He had left and he went, he jumped on the top of the bar to give a speech and I could hear it because you should always have all of your senses in tune, not just visual. You should be listening and smelling anything, anything to like heighten your senses, be aware of what's going on, develop a sense for when something is going to happen or when something is happening in another room, that kind of thing. And so I heard there was a commotion and I ran over. Uh, I probably would have used a flash. Um, I shot this actually, that one with my R6 and I wanted a wide shot, but I had my 5D on my arm, but it wasn't, it wasn't really equipped for low light abilities here. Um, with an F4 lens, I just knew I was really pushing it with ISO and everything, but it, it's what I had and I kind of did make it work, but it wasn't ideal and that happens. Let's take a look at the before and after of this one. I kind of like the one on the left, to be honest. Um, I think this one, I think I would re-edit a little bit differently, but I did make an image that was consistent with the look of the rest of the images. Anytime I have someone willing to be a model, I'm not asking them, I'm actually just kind of uh, going with it. Um, I, I take advantage. It's a good variety. Again, 95%, 99% of what I do is just to document. But if someone catches my eye and wants some photos taken, and I know it's a good photo, like her interacting with the product, that kind of thing, she looked the part, it was perfect. I love the stained glass in the back. 
Um, so I went ahead and shot a few of her. So some of you may recognize this image from my low light photography thumbnail. Um, I really love the lighting here. Uh, I really just loved it. Let's see a before and after. As you can see, I didn't really change anything. All I did is add contrast, I sharpened it. Um, but by shooting with a good balance of, but by shooting with a good balance of flash, ambient light, etc., I'm able to get this really warm, natural glow. Um, in fact, it looks like I did not fire my flash. I shot this entirely with ambient. So the ambient light would be from the candle. It would be from the photo booth, etc. Is this a great image for the client? It has a lot of elements, but it's missing a few and or it's missing one main element and that would be product. But I'm not about to jump in. I probably saw the bottle wasn't turned the right way. The next series of images, I was just having some artistic fun. Um, what I wanted to do is just fill the frame as much as I could with a lot of action, and I wanted it to have that kind of flattened out look. All of this, again, is with my 50 millimeter. I raised my aperture in order to get as many of them in focus as I could, but as you can see, because they're all pretty like differently distanced from me, uh, I wasn't really able to get more than just these two in focus. But I prefer that you can see the rest of them somewhat in focus rather than completely like blown out, you know, focus-wise. They were just a fun group. And so another good example of me kind of stealing shots from the photo booth. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to support content like this, please like, subscribe. If you want additional support from me, check out my Patreon page where I offer job reviews, critiques, anything you need, there should be a level for you. If you just want to give me some moral support, there's a new $1 level. You still unlock everything on the Patreon site that I post. And even though a dollar isn't much, it just tells me that you appreciate what I do. It actually means a lot to me. So thank you for watching.